interns? Should they be paid or should they be unpaid? Um, I don't have a great answer for you. I think for a lot of business owners, the concept of having an intern has crossed their minds at some point in the journey. There's really two main reasons that I think interns end up with you. Number one, you have a real specific need for a project, and maybe you don't think it facilitates hiring somebody, or maybe you don't have the budget for that, so you think an intern might be a good fit. Or perhaps for the second reason is somebody approached you or your business about interning with you. You have a reputation in the community, they know what you're about, they like what they see, and they want to be a part of that. Today we're going to unpack the pros and cons and ins and outs of having an intern, making that a good experience for you and a good experience for them as well. As I alluded to, the first reason that uh, most businesses get into hosting interns is because they have a specific need and maybe they don't want to devote the staff time or the budget to hiring staff for that. And so they go out looking for some maybe inexpensive labor, maybe some less experienced labor, but somebody who can definitely tackle the tasks that they need to get completed. And I would say that's my first tip for when you're seeking an intern, you really need to think long and hard about what that intern's job responsibilities are gonna be. You know, what are the details of the ins and outs of that? Because if you're not careful, an internship can be a disaster for you, it can be a disaster for them, it can be a disaster for whatever school they happen to be affiliated with. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. Number one, an intern isn't a staff person. They're normally here limited hours, they're normally on site um, you know, for a limited time frame with very specific tasks to do. Whereas the rest of your team is probably around 40 hours a week if you have a team. Also, what they're doing needs to be very specific because an intern comes to you to learn. They bring a certain amount of skills with them and a certain amount of ideas and excitement and enthusiasm for what they want to do to, to help your business grow. But you need to be very clear with that or it can very quickly turn into there's just another person sitting around you not knowing what to do and that's another person therefore that you have to plan for, you have to train, you have to educate and all that kind of stuff. So when it comes to the specific role that you want this intern to fill, you need to make sure that you get the word out to uh, strategic avenues, right? Maybe you share it on your business page, on social media, or on your website, along with your open opportunities. Maybe you let people know, hey, we're looking for an intern for this time duration. Maybe it's spring, summer, fall, winter. And we're looking for them to help us with fill in the blank there. And that includes social media as well. So create those job listings on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever else you're gonna do that. Put some graphics, maybe a brief video together, just introducing yourself and your business and announcing that you have some internship opportunities. That way, those can get out to the right channels and you can cover a lot more bases. Another strategy we've used in the past is going to college or high school job fairs, internship fairs, career day sorts of things. And then you can introduce your business to them, talk about the various areas of interest and coverage in that business, and you can actually in real time talk with students, uh, meet them, look at their resumes, kind of get an idea um, of who they are personally, build some rapport, and decide if that's a good uh, reason to kind of collaborate together on an internship. So once the resumes start coming in or you start getting calls or people who are interested, it's really important to interview the candidates. and. I rarely don't interview a candidate, even if I don't quite see the way they link up with a potential internship or even really a job position. Because a resume is a piece of paper with you know usually black lettering on it um, that highlights this person's skills and experiences, but you never really know what's beyond that. Um, a lot of folks don't include um, things like their personal areas of interest. And I think sometimes you can be missing a big opportunity. My, this entire company grew out of areas of interest for me. My formal training has nothing to do with marketing, uh, but my experience, um, my side hustles, my other small business endeavors have all danced with marketing heavily, and that turned into, over the course of 15 to 20 years, um, you know, Ash Interactive and our other brands. So it's important to speak with people. A lot of interns in a general way it could be younger, so maybe they don't have the experience of interviewing or writing a resume that's going to be 
really closely tailored or crafted uh, towards what you think you're looking for. So if most people take the time out of their day to apply, I take the time out of my day and my team's day to at least speak with them. Sometimes that's Zoom or it's a phone call to start. And if things go well, maybe you invite them in for an interview. Um, but I would encourage you to at least speak to everybody, respond to everybody, and um, let them know you appreciate the time and interest uh, regardless. The other great thing about interviewing is it is a real service to the student, right? Um, again, many of them don't have the experience with that, and we all know what that's like. We've all been in an uncomfortable interview, or we've had somebody come in who really didn't have interview chops or whatever we want to call it. Um, you know, they're awkward. Maybe a handshake is a, a thing that they need to practice, eye contact. Um, just speaking clearly and loudly, uh, asking questions, coming prepared to an interview. Um, so all those little you know, bits and pieces that we've picked up over the years, it's a great opportunity for us to impart those on them as well, even if they don't end up being a, a formal intern. I'd also encourage you not to hire interns just to do like the Hollywood intern stuff, right? So making copies, making coffee, going and getting your car washed, cleaning up, being basically just a grunt to order around. You know, I think that is a huge waste of your time and energy because <laughs> not only are they not learning, but you're just having somebody to boss around and grunt around. You're not really leveraging them to help your business grow and to fill in legitimate gaps. Because believe it or not, you can get your own coffee, you can make your own copies, uh, but if you have somebody who you can turn on to a specific task, that can actually help you develop a plan or a program that has come fresh from your mind that really just needs capable uh, mind and, and body behind that to make those things come to life. So um, I would always encourage you to look for authentic tasks that they can be creating. And of course, there's always times when everybody needs to pitch in and do things, but I wouldn't make that a primary goal for your intern. The final point I want to touch on is one I'm excited to hear about uh, your experiences from. So please leave some thoughts in the comments uh, uh, wherever you're viewing this. This is the concept of interns. Should they be paid or should they be unpaid? Um, I don't have a great answer for you, you know? My background was in teaching, so we did plenty of internships and even student teaching, which was like a semester, and I didn't get paid for any of that. Um, actually, we had to pay, because we're paying the college to go to college <laughs> and set up that internship. So my experiences, just given my past, were all unpaid internships. Now, is there an argument for paying them? For sure. Their, their time could be valuable, what they're doing could be valuable to you. Um, but I usually land on the side of not paying interns just for the industry that we're in. Um, there could be an interesting circumstance that would pop up, but in general, I'm a no pay intern guy. Um, so let me know if you think that's horrible or not. Um, you know, my thought is, You've got to get these experiences going. If you really want to get into a certain industry, you should really want to learn. And not getting paid for that is sort of, I think, maybe an incentive for you to even try harder and learn all that you can, even more so than if you're getting paid. Again, I don't know if that's true or not for everybody. I know plenty of industries uh, pay their interns a decent wage. Another thing to think about is a small business internship versus a large corporation internship. Maybe that's a deciding factor on if you'd have funds for that or not. One thing that I should look into that I hadn't was are there grants out there for paying interns for internship programs? Because that might be really valuable. I don't know if that does exist or not, but let me know in the comments if you know of something like that existing. I think there's a lot to wade through when it comes to the paying or non-paid internship. Theoretically, if the intern's great and they're you know, creating a lot of momentum and they're helping your business grow, theoretically there could be a paying job at the end of that, but uh, for me, I've just leaned on the no side. Thanks for spending some time with us to look at internships and talk through that. I'd love to talk more about it. Um, if you have questions, comments, anything like that, leave them in the comments or shoot us a message. I'm glad to follow up anytime. If you are an intern looking for an internship, always, don't hesitate to reach out to us. I'm always glad to meet you, to talk to you. If we can facilitate you, I'd love to. If we can't, then I would love to help you find someplace else to have a great experience. So have a great one. We'll see you in the next episode.